guys! Welcome back to my channel! And this week we are in Illustrator and Photoshop because I had a viewer ask me a question about how to make a cookie cutter emboss effect in Illustrator itself. Um, I'm not as proficient in Illustrator as I am with Photoshop, so I did have to do a lot of research on how to do said effect. Um, and the research I did did not come up very well or helpful. All I got was mostly photos of how somebody made one um, or how it should look in 3D. So um, given the fact that 3D printing was kind of what I got as a result in my research, I figured that's the route they want us to take, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So to showcase this lovely tutorial I'm trying to make, <laughs> we're going to be using the star tool, which is over here under the rectangle. It's normally the rectangle tool, but if you click it, right click it, you'll get star tool and other ones too. I feel like the star tool might be more helpful in showcasing this lovely effect, so we're going to go with that. All right. Let me now move that, if it's going to let me move it. Hello? Okay. I seem to have issues with trying to move my... There we go. All right. I'm going to center that. Now, for this effect, you have to... I For what I found that was helpful for me is to just use a stroke. You'll notice how over here the uh, fill is deactivated, and we don't want that, so nix that out if you can. Uh, make sure that this is the stroke, and it's set to a gray hue. Um, only because when you add the stroke in the 3D effect, it will showcase nicely. So let's do that. So go ahead now, after you've made that star with the gray stroke right there, go to Effects and click on 3D and Extrude and Bevel. We're now going to want to click Preview because usually it's checked off for some unknown reason. And you should see that. And that's your standard Extrude Depth with all that enhanced. So now we're going to move our rotation so it's more like a cookie cutter like going to go. That's about okay for me, I think. That looks good. Alright, so we're going to click OK on that. Um, so that is your 3D effect. Now, I did try to do a gradient in here, but for some reason, the gradients on the um, on here were not working properly. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong. And again, if you have any knowledge, please educate me in the comments. I would love to hear your feedback. Because again, I'm just a very much a beginner in here. So I clicked over here to try and change the gradient to make it a really nice hue, but it didn't really work so well. So, because as you can see, it does nothing, it just stays gray. So that's why I decided to work in Photoshop as well as Illustrator because it seemed to be more helpful than that. So, all right, that's where we're at. There's the 3D effect. Now, you could do this entirely in Photoshop, technically, because you do have a 3D um, option in some versions of Photoshop. For some reason, my, my version of Photoshop, the 3D effect is not there. I don't know where it went. It was there months ago, and now all of a sudden, boom, it's disappeared. So, I don't know. So, we're going to import, ex actually, we're going to export this into a Photoshop file. I will show you how to do that, because I learned that recently, and it's pretty nifty. I'm going to go down here on File, and click Export. And we are going to now click over here to format and click PSD, which is somewhere. There it is, Photoshop PSD. And you'll just save this as Cutter or whatever you want to name it as. And we're going to place that in, uh, place it in Documents. Export. Yep. That's fine. Whatever it says, just go with it and roll with it. It's going to probably take about a couple seconds to do that. I'm going to minimize Adobe Illustrator for now. And we're going to go into the two shop CS. And now open up that document. Documents, hello. Alright, where is the cutter? So cutter PSD right there. Uh, make sure it exports properly. Otherwise I have to go back and re-edit. Hopefully not though. Okay, so now let's add some effects to make this look steel and cookie cutter like. So let's go back to here. Um, alright, so I already added some effects on top of this. I was playing around with this to see if I can get the right can, the right type of an effect I was going for, so this is what I did. Um, I went to Bevel and Emboss. I obviously checked Emboss because that was kind of what they were looking for, an Emboss cookie cutter. So I went and did that immediately. Um, technique is smooth. The depth is 100%. Direction is up. The size is 5, and so is the soften is 5. Um... 
There's a 90 degree angle, a 30 degree altitude with global light checked off. Down below for my screen, I selected a gray color like that. Um, I left the um, change the blend mode a bit to a another gray hue, kind of a blackish gray charcoal. Um, 75 for the opacity on both those. Then inner shadow, um, I have white for a color and multiply for the blend mode. 100% opacity on that, 90 degree angle, and we have a distance of 5 and a size of 5 and the rest is 0, which is a joke. Next, there's going to be satin. Uh, multiply for your blend mode, 60% opacity with a semi-gray, almost white color. Uh, 42 degree angle, 34 degree distance, and a 24 pixel size. Um, invert is checked off with this contour here. Um, this contour, I believe, is the standard one they use for satin, so use that, which is Gaussian. And next, I added a gradient overlay. Um, blend modes overlay, obviously. Um, opacity 100%. Um, I chose two of these uh, almost, they're almost exactly the same type of gray. They're just almost a little, they're just a tad, tad off. That's the first gray on the left, and this is the gray on the right. They're just shy of being together. Did that. Um, left it all the same. I'm going to click OK. And, hello. Show up. There we go. Um, that's the effect I, I got out of mine. Um, I think it looks almost cookie cutter shapish, in my opinion. Um, I don't necessarily know if this was the exact replica of something that you had seen or that you, um, were looking for specifically, um, but this was really the best, um, I could come up with for a cookie cutter like, um, Again, if you have, if this isn't really quite what you're looking for, try to send me a link or something that depicts the exact replica of what you had seen or saw or whatever. But I do hope this did help you to some degree. Um, those of you that are more um, professional in Illustrator and can do this whole bit in Illustrator, that's awesome. Please do show me how. I would love to know. Um, but I did this in two parts just so I could get the exact effect I really wanted out of it. So there's that. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, comment with any questions you have or suggestions. Again, if you need more help with this realm, please try to, please send me a comment with a, a specific link or something that has what you really need. But I, just, I do hope this was somewhat, to a degree, helpful to you. Um, I did do my best to help you out, and hopefully it was something you liked. Um, hey guys, thank you for watching. As you always do, liking is um, awesome. Please do that. Um, yeah, and again, if you need anything Photoshop-related done or help or anything commission-wise, feel free to email me on my business email, which was located in my About Me section here on YouTube, um, and comment with anything if you want as well, and I can reach out to you however you need me to, and I will help you to the best of my knowledge. Thanks, guys. Laters.